Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a neat problem called find the maximum length of valid subsequence i. The name sounds a bit complex, but the core idea is actually quite clever. We'll break down the problem, walk through an example, and then dive into a really intuitive solution. All right, so here's the official problem. The main goal is this. We get a list of numbers, and we need to find the longest possible subsequence that follows a special rule. The rule says that if you take any two neighbors in your subsequence and add them up, their sum must have the same parity. So either all the sums are even, or all the sums are odd. Our job is to find the absolute longest subsequence that satisfies this. Let's walk through the second example, as it's a bit more interesting. The input is a list of ones and twos. The longest valid subsequence is shown on the slide. Let's check why it's valid. One plus two is three, which is odd. The next pair, two plus one, is also three, which is odd. It turns out, Every neighboring pair in this subsequence adds up to an odd number. Since all the sums have the same parity, this is a valid subsequence, and its length is 6. So what's the trick here? It all comes down to parity, whether a number is even or odd. Think about adding two numbers. An odd plus an odd is always even. An even plus an even is also always even. But an odd plus an even will always be odd. This is the absolute key to the whole problem. This insight means that any valid subsequence must fit one of only four patterns. First, a sequence of all odd numbers. An odd plus an odd is even. So all sums in that sequence will be even. Second, a sequence of all even numbers. Again, all sums will be even. Third, a sequence that alternates between odd and even numbers. In this case, every sum will be odd. And finally, a sequence that alternates even then odd, then even, where again, every sum will be odd. That's it. These are the only possibilities. This simplifies our strategy immensely. We don't need to check every single combination of numbers. We just need to find the longest possible subsequence for each of our four specific parity patterns. We can do this greedily by just going through the input list. For example, to find the all-odd sequence, we just count all the odd numbers. To find the alternating odd-even sequence, we look for the first odd, then the first even after that, and so on. We do this for all four patterns, and just take the longest length we find. All right, here is the Python code from the solution that implements this idea. It might look a little dense at first, but it's doing exactly what we just discussed. Let's quickly walk through how it works. The other loop is just testing our four patterns. Let's use one for odd, and zero for even. Inside, the CNT variable keeps track of the length of the subsequence we're currently building for a given pattern. The real magic is this line here. It checks if the current number's parity matches the parity we're looking for at this step in our pattern. The expression CNT modulo 2 cleverly alternates between index 0 and 1 of the pattern list. This is how we check for those alternating sequences. If we find a match, we increment our counter, which means we've successfully added an element to our subsequence and will now look for the next parity in the pattern. After checking all the numbers, we see if the length we found is the best one so far. So what about performance? This approach is very efficient. For time complexity, we loop through the input array a total of four times, once for each pattern. Since four is a constant, the complexity is linear, or big O of n, where n is the number of elements in our input list. And for space, we only use a few variables like the result and the counter. The memory used doesn't depend on the input size at all, so that's constant space, or big O of one. So let's recap the main points. The key was realizing the problem's condition about sums was just a hidden rule about parity. This simplified everything, revealing that there are only four types of valid subsequences. With that knowledge, we could just build the longest possible sequence for each of those four patterns and pick the best one. It's a great example of how understanding the core properties of a problem can lead to a simple and elegant solution. And that's a wrap. I hope this explanation helped you understand the logic behind the solution. If it did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Subscribe for more Leet Code breakdowns and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy coding.